we have two presenters, no, no three presenters already here. Other ones are coming. And we are starting now with a presentation of Ricardo. Please start, Ricardo. Okay, uh, good afternoon for everyone. Welcome to our presentation. Um, my name is Ricardo Stomeyang. I originally come from Indonesia, but right now I'm taking a PhD at uh, Faculty of Tropical Agri-Science, Czech University of Life Science in Prague. Today I will um, present about one of my topic. It's about the constraint on adoption of small-scale biogas in Indonesia from socio-technical and socio-economic uh, point of view. So as we know, Indonesia is one of the largest population in the world, or number four, and we are archipelago. Uh, we have 17,000 islands. Um, in terms of like resources, and then we have also about the human resources, we have uh, a lot of potential, but we can look at it in the next slide. So as for my introduction about my uh, research, um, as we are, know that Indonesia is one of the uh, contributor, the biggest contributor. Uh, the research uh, done by uh, Edgar in 2016 says that uh, we have 503,000, 330 uh, million tons of the uh, emissions. Um, also at the same time, since the 1970s, we already have uh, 43,000 um, uh, uh, biogas digesters uh, installed, yeah? But however, compared to the other uh, African and Asian countries, Indonesia still very low adoption. And uh, the reason of this because of the lack of knowledge in skills and maintenance of biogas technology. And the same time, uh, Indonesia still rely on the non-renewable energy such as crude oil and uh, we have uh, one of the biggest exporter of the palm oil uh, bio, um, and also coal and natural gas and fossil fuel. However, in uh, Indonesia committed uh, to cut the uh, green gas houses uh, around 26 to 29 percent by 2030. Yeah, but uh, at the same time, Indonesia is still very reliant on the fossil fuel. And what is the uh, role of the biogas and then how Indonesia uh, would interest it to adopt? So I will explain further. So uh, from the report that I collected uh, from the history from the uh, 1970s until 2018, uh, Indonesia has faced uh, so many changing in the adoption of the biogas. It's been ups and down. Um, it's sometimes it's uh, uh, high adoptions, uh, in particular in uh, uh, in the capital city or in the in the uh, uh, in the in Java Islands, in particular, because there's uh, 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 governments, uh, central governments there, and then good. Uh, school or good uh, educations there. All development are uh, since uh, 70s it has been developed there. So uh, it's, it's, it's quite a make sense that how this, um, the spread of this biogas still uh, centralized in Java. However, in 1990s uh, uh, until uh, 2005 uh, has been a spread, but it's still quite small compared to the uh, to the other uh, islands, like in Bali and Java, uh, it start uh, spread in uh, Kalimantan, West Java, Aceh, and Central Java. And as we can see uh, in in the next slide, I will explain about uh, what uh, the 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 total numbers. But uh, as you can see, there's a lot of. Uh, external fundings like the it's not the government run uh, biogas uh, development projects but it's mostly run by the non-profit organizations the right now by july 2019 the total uh, biogas digester is around 43000 um is mostly in, in java and bali islands 
and uh, the number are uh, uh, keep increasing right now, but uh, the spread is still not uh, uh, equally because we have uh, such a large archipelago. So my research objective on this uh, study is to investigate the what is the constraint uh, in terms of socio-technical and socio-economic because uh, we cannot uh, pinpoint this problem from one uh, issues, but we have to see it in very multidisciplinary so disciplinary and uh, what is the barriers and then what is the future potential for the biogas technology. <clears throat> So uh, I conduct a uh, uh, DEX review from uh, Scopus Science Direct, a, a web science Google Scholar, and also some uh, from the report uh, using these uh, keywords uh, in terms of like the adoption of the uh, biogas in 10 provinces, so Sumatra, Java, Bali, uh, and also some in uh, Lampung and uh, Kalimantan. As uh, to give you an overview about my uh, methodology in uh, assessment of the literature, uh, I use the, some keywords here, the biogas, small scale biogas, Indonesia adoption, socioeconomic. And uh, I just use the screening criteria in 10 years literature and then some of the reports. And I end up uh, using the articles that included in this study is uh, 71 articles. What I found uh, in, in particular in this uh, uh, adoption of the biogas from socio-technical and socio-economic, I can uh, uh, divide it into four. From technical point of view, it's mostly uh, the problem of the lack of technical training and uh, how the conventional technologies can compete uh, you know, with the, uh, the fossil fuel. Uh, uh, over the renewable uh, energy, like uh, the biogas itself. And also the problem of the <clears throat> economic, um, as we can see the high investment in the labor and the uh, first installment, uh, which is uh, very competitive towards uh, the existing uh, liquid uh, petroleum uh, gas, which is government still subsidize uh, uh, in a very cheap uh, uh, price, for th three kilograms uh, uh, LPG is, uh, is around two or three dollars. <throat> and also the low adoption of the low awareness about the benefit of this uh, biogas. And uh, since the users are mostly women and mothers, uh, they're in the, as I can see from the uh, previous uh, studies that uh, they're, Involvement are very uh, low uh, com uh, compared to uh, men or fathers in, in process of the decision making. This is, uh, in, in, in fact, is one of the social uh, constraints of the biogas adoption. And of course, about the institutional, uh, the lack of coordination between local to centralized, and then uh, it's Indonesia has been long uh, Im implemented the decentralized uh, government. So uh, in terms of the adoption itself, uh, there's a lot of coordination layers that uh, is, is difficult to implement in, uh, in the local areas or in the, in the rural areas. <clears throat> um, uh, I will explain a little bit about the problem tree of the bagus adoptions in three a uh, uh, big uh, chunk of the problem is why the adoption is low, because first is about the high investment cost, and the second is about the technical, and then the third is the social factors. As I explained before, the high investment cost in the beginning is quite uh, expensive for farmers. Uh, by the research of the transcript, as I have the note here, it's, um, it be a uh, one biogas, uh, if uh, the small scale biogas is around 400 to 700 uh, US dollar, which is very expensive for farmers to adopt that. While uh, at the same time, uh, it needs a, a lot of uh, maintenance uh, in order for them to uh, avoid the leakage of the pipe uh, 
the technical of the low uh, uh, skill uh, uh, it's, it's one of the reason why uh, the biogas adoption is very uh, hard to implement because of the unavailability of skilled technical workers. And also, as I mentioned before about the social uh, factors, uh, education, uh, uh, less women involvement, and then the awareness of the benefit. As one of the example that um, in, in terms of the financing and uh, investment, as we can see from 2009, 2018, um, the the fluctuation of the adoption is quite uh, 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 erratic because uh, as uh, it was uh, high in, in, in 2009 to 2014, but it's gained drop. And then as we can see, the, the reliance on the full subsidy and the cost sharing is really high uh, here. So uh, as, as we can see from this graph that actually um, the the investment cost is mostly reliance on the external factors, not yet adopted as the a government, um, you know, uh, 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 regulations. As as we in the beginning, I explained about Indonesia is um, committed to cut the green gas houses for 23, but uh, this is uh, the this is the <clears throat> the fact what happened in the in the field right now. So it, as you can see from this map, uh, the location of the biogas still very low in different areas. Uh, it's mostly in Java, Central Java, Bali, and a few in uh, Sulawesi, and then uh, some in Kelampung, and this is Bali. And from the 2009 to 2018, uh, the numbers uh, is, is quite uh, uh, not so significant, but is increasing. So what I highlight from this uh, review, uh, I can see from uh, four uh, uh, angles. Uh, one is about the policy framework and then technology and technical enhancement and then funding and sustainability. Um, as I already explained before that um, the policy framework is very important in order for Indonesia uh, committed to the, to the uh, emission uh, commitment. And that's why we need uh, uh, coherence and centralized uh, policy framework that transparent and more sustainable. And then also the technical enhancement to, uh, to adapt this uh, uh, skill in order for the farmers or the rural people can adopt this technology. And the funding itself, it should be something that more attractive because right now we are still competing with the uh, LPG. Uh, uh, as uh, as for uh, uh, the household uh, purpose. And the issue of the sustainability that uh, this uh, waste from the biogas can be used for the bio slurry and it has been to be uh, integrated farming uh, from the uh, cow dams from, uh, in order for them to reduce the green gas houses. So I think um, that's explain about my uh, uh, presentation. Um, if any uh, questions from online or I'm happy to have uh, to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Ricardo, for your interesting presentation. Uh, we are getting a little bit in time constraints. Uh, the time is up. <laughs> for your part. So I would say uh, we continue with presentations and we come back to discussion at the end of our session, right? Sure. Okay, thank you for your understanding. And then the next one would be Shama when I'm right. Shama is here, yeah. Shama seems to be here and I would like to ask uh, the admin to start a presentation or video or whatever we have for Shama. Okay. Hello. Yes, uh, uh, I'm trying to share my presentation. Uh, uh, himself, I see. Okay. Yes, we see it. Okay, you might start. Okay, thank you all for giving me the opportunity to present uh, this work. 
So I'm Chama Theodore, a PhD student at the Department of Sustainable Technologies of the Faculty of Tropical Agri Sciences of the Czech University of Life Sciences. So the title of my presentation today is Peaceful Analysis of the Development of Small-Scale Biogas Technology in Sub-Saharan Africa, a Systematic Review. As an introduction, uh, it is uh, still observed in, in Sub-Saharan Africa that uh, uh, that rural households still depend highly on traditional energy sources like firewood and also on fossil fuels, uh, which is not good. And also, um, we know that small scale biogas technology can contribute to uh, sustainable development goals 7, uh, 3, 13, and indirectly 1 and 11, and most especially. Uh, sustainable Development Goal 7, uh, which is uh, enabling uh, clean and sustainable energy uh, for all. And nowadays, the development of small-scale gas technology is a complex problem uh, because uh, of its various factors that are influencing it. And the development of small-scale biogas technology in sub-Saharan Africa also requires the uh, understanding of the political, economic, uh, social, and technological, uh, even environmental and legal aspects, uh, which uh, this study is uh, actually uh, analyzing these factors uh, to identify the potential or uh, the risks of the technology in the uh, sub-Saharan Africa, African zone. So the purpose of this study is to assess the impact of the, these peaceful factors on the development of small-scale biogas technology uh, in the period from 2000 to, uh, uh, to, to, to 2020, and also to uh, uh, assess the impact of these uh, peaceful factors on the adoption and dissemination of the technology in sub-Saharan Africa. And we intended to provide background knowledge uh, to carry out further socio-technical studies uh, related to the development of this technology in sub-Saharan Africa, including also uh, socio-technical transitions. So uh, to conduct this study, uh, we surveyed both scientific and gray literature, uh, like uh, uh, on various uh, online databases, uh, including Web of Science. And uh, the uh, search uh, of the, the the, 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 the articles and uh, publications uh, was uh, based on uh, identifying the articles uh, that uh, actually reported the case of small-scale biogas technology, including the constraints, uh, the policies of, and, uh, and related uh, topics. So uh, the selection was done based on the focus of the uh, publications on the small scale plants, uh, also the constraints, the drivers, uh, and also uh, the prospects. So in the search, uh, we in the initial stage of the search, we identified about 11,317 peer reviewed articles and also about 44 uh, gray uh, literature. That means various reports uh, from governments and also ministries. And also uh, in the first screening, uh, reading of the titles and the abstract, we, we retained about uh, 148. Uh, which some duplicates were removed. And uh, after the second screening of reading the full text, we retained about uh, 64 publications. Uh, uh, out of the 64, 49 were peer-reviewed peer articles and 15 were gray uh, literature. So we also identified uh, key uh, pixel factors. Uh, for example, uh, for economic factors, we have like capital costs, uh, the maintenance costs for, politi uh, for uh, political factors, we had like uh, renewable energy and climate policy. We saw also the role of government support for anaerobic digestion. And for social, we had, for example, affordability, acceptance of the technology. Uh, for the technologies, technology itself, uh, we saw uh, like the choice of the design, waste availability, waste collection reliability, and also environmental, like the global warming potential, and most especially deforestation, which is an issue uh, in the region, and legal aspects like feeding tariffs, which are still under uh, uh, development uh, in the region. 
So uh, we equally looked at the uh, influence of these factors on the adoption and, and, and widespread uh, dissemination uh, of the small scale biogas technology in the region. And uh, based on the number of articles that uh, were obtained, the 64 articles, we identified some that uh, actually reported uh, clearly these factors. And we can categorize these articles uh, in, in, in different uh, five weighted categories uh, based on the uh, on the uh, on the reports of each of the factors. So, like we saw. Uh, some factors reported uh, in over 20 articles, some reported in uh, between 16 and 20 articles, some of the factors in about uh, 11 to 15 uh, publications, uh, some in six to 10, and then some in one uh, to five uh, publications. So uh, with that, uh, we developed a radar chart to see how do these factors uh, have been attended to since uh, 2000 to 2020. So uh, with regards to the key findings, we, uh, which is just a summary of the key findings, uh, we realized that uh, uh, there are actually uh, insufficient uh, uh, policies uh, in, in most cases like poor uh, preparation of those policies addressing the development of small scale biogas technology. For example, we have renewable energies that, uh, that mentioned just a bit uh, 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 of uh, small scale biogas plants with very little uh, to guide the actions uh, to actually develop the, the technology. And the, uh, most governments are still expected to increase uh, the institutional and financial support considering, considering that the uh, initial investment is actually one of the factors that is uh, uh, preventing a lot of users, a lot of people uh, from uh, adopting the technology. And also uh, renewable energy incentives are still to be uh, well applied in most of the countries, in, in actually most of the countries. And uh, it is uh, believed that uh, sustainable credits uh, that can actually drive uh, the, the adoption of the technology, they are still absent in the region. And uh, uh, it's, it's really uh, important uh, I mean, to introduce them because for the past, uh, uh, to say two decades, they have not been uh, sufficient. So, and still in the past uh, two decades, uh, the private sector has been a huge uh, uh, potential in increase, increasing investments on the plants. So it would uh, regards to the government support and also technology, te te technological wise, uh, like the poor quality of the poor design quality, even construction, uh, also the operation of the plants and the maintenance uh, uh, has not uh, actually uh, helped, uh, I mean, in achieving high technological efficiency of the plants uh, uh, in the last uh, two decades. So there is still much to do. And also uh, biogas technology with regards to mitigating climate change has not really been at the center of uh, some of the uh, considerations, uh, say, from uh, policy uh, or from environmental policy uh, in the region. So there is still a lot to do. And also legal aspects uh, regarding the technology are also undermined. And till now, uh, feeding tariffs are still experimented in countries like South Africa and also uh, Uganda. So. Uh, based on the number of articles that uh, we that were reported, we, re we realized that in the past two decades, political aspects have really been at the center, especially uh, with the sustainable uh, sustainable um, uh, energy for all initiative that has been helping governments uh, to develop uh, renewable energy policies and also taking into consideration the development of small scale biogas technology and the issues of. Uh, uh, feeding tariffs and other uh, uh, tax considerations that have also been considered, even though some of them are still under testing to see if uh, they can actually help in the development of the small scale biogas technology. Uh, uh, in the smoke, uh, in the biogas technology, we, we also see, uh, uh, I mean, uh, to, uh, due to the push to develop. Uh, uh, clean energy, like we see uh, with the case of clean development mechanism, and also uh, the case of uh, 
of uh, reducing global warming, uh, I mean, global, uh, reducing uh, greenhouse gases, we are also seeing a push uh, in that sense uh, to actually help people in the region to adopt the technology. And also uh, there has uh, been some, uh, I mean, some activities in the region to actually uh, improve the designs and also uh, uh, help uh, say users to select good designs of the, uh, of the small scale biogas plant. So that is still in progress. And uh, these factors uh, like the political, legal, environmental and technological aspects are actually helping to adopt, uh, uh, helping the users to adopt the technology. Uh, but the economic aspects, which is uh, uh, like the initial investment costs, uh, providing subsidies, and also uh, government uh, providing also uh, subsidies to the uh, users. Uh, these aspects, including uh, social aspects like uh, uh, awareness creation, these factors have been contributing a lot in the dissemination of the small scale biogas technology, even though there are still some constraints that are affecting the technology. So uh, to wrap up, uh, we have uh, development implications from, the, from this review that renewable energy policies of several countries of the region still require focus on technology, on, on small-scale biogas technology to address the constraints uh, hindering its development. And we know that the civil society has played a major role in the formulation and the implementation of the national biogas programs. Uh, and we think that uh, in the, uh, in the, I mean, in the future, uh, they still uh, remain a, uh, I mean, key uh, important key, uh, stakeholders in the development of the technology. And there is need to also uh, mobilize local capacities to lead innovations in the design, construction, operation, and maintenance of the small-scale biogas plants. Uh, not uh, forgetting that the government uh, has regulatory and also financial support are uh, actually needed by the users and the private sector, sector to adopt and also innovate the plants actually to reduce uh, energy poverty and also increase uh, economic growth that can also lead to rural transformation. And uh, finally, the collective action uh, involving all stakeholders and international uh, uh, all local and international stakeholders is still required to increase the energy generation capacity of the small scale biogas plants and also their capacity for climate change uh, mitigation. So uh, that is it. So thank you for, uh, for, for your time. And I will stop here for, for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for presenting. And we have a very short time for a question. And uh, most of my questions you answered already in your conclusions, but okay. maybe uh, just selecting one point. There are many screws we have seen yeah, to uh, increase adoption of biogas plants. Maybe if you select one of the screws you like best, which would be the screw you would turn first to increase the adoption rate of biogas plants? Just one. Uh, uh, the first one is the uh, the economic aspect is actually uh, one of the things that is hindering it because uh, if the uh, if the finances are available, uh, the farmers will be able to construct their plants and use them. So uh, actually, there is the role of the government and there is also the role of the private sector and as well as the households themselves uh, to mobilize uh, these uh, resources. Uh, financial resources uh, to uh, construct and use uh, th these plants. Okay, thank you very much. We can come back later for discussion when we are through with our presenters. And I'm looking now for the next one in the system, which would be guide. Yeah, guide about Syria. Let me come back to you. Is he here? Yeah, guide seems to be here. And we need his video or his live speech. So guide, please turn up on the screen, turn on your camera. And I would like to ask our admin in case there would be a video of guide. 
to share it with us. Um, hi, uh, send me a message that he need 10 minutes. Okay. Then the next one we have here is Sören. <laughs> okay, Sören, then it's your turn. Do you have do you have a live speech or a video? Uh, I try a live speech and share my screen at the moment. And if it's not working, then also there will be a video available. Okay, try to share your screen. Seems to work. We have it here. Okay, so off we go. You see the slides? Perfectly. Very good. Okay. Perfect. So then I would like to welcome you to my presentation, what is really a good contribution to the previous speakers, I think. And um, the study we conducted was embedded within the FUASA project, which is a collaboration out of the German universities and East African universities. And the title of my presentation is the Opportunities for Biogas Utilization in East Africa, a case study of Uganda. Um, the fruit and vegetable for all season, in short, Fruvasa project has the objective to reduce seasonality of food insecurity and nutrient losses, evaluate and develop processing techniques on selected fruits and leafy vegetables with the focus on single households and rural setting in target countries of Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda. Uh, my work or the study of us was embedded within the work package for resource efficient energy autonomous fruit and vegetable processing and the base concept uh, you could see on the right side of the screen where we have a fruit processing process. Uh, we have waste out of this. The waste should be utilized within a biogas process to generate energy and the energy should come back into the uh, fruit processing process. For this, uh, the first outcome in the project was uh, or should be a baseline survey about present status and opportunities of biogas utilization. Uh, within the study, uh, what the target fruit of Uganda was the Czech fruit, uh, which was an uh, assumption because about 55 up to 70% of the fruit is considered as waste. And so the feasibility to in created within a biogas process should be researched. The methodological approach was a systemic literature review about systemic perspectives of biogas systems in Uganda, combined with uh, conducted expert interviews from us uh, with, uh, in the region of Uganda um, with experts from NGO, development agency, national associations, private sector. And combined out of these two sources, we conducted a SWOT analysis to create the baseline survey. Our findings show that from the qualitative content analysis, the technical and socioeconomic points are really in the focus in the area. And in the next slides, I will go a bit more in detail um, uh, within this aspects. Uh, and first, maybe a short overview uh, about the general system or uh, installed in the area. So we have livestock farming in a household. Uh, the manure is collected and utilized within the biogas process to generate biogas, which is mostly used for cooking purpose. And the further or the digestate, what is coming out is could be applied as fertilizer to the field. Also, human excreta pit could be connected to the system. Through the installation of these systems, several positive outcomes are recorded in the area. Uh, the first one I would like to highlight is that we decoupling uh, from declining wood fuel resources in the area and uh, preventing energy crisis due to strong price increase in the last years. Um, one major aspect, of course, is the health uh, related issue. Um, so with the installment of the biogas systems, we can reduce the indoor air pollution uh, a lot. And so uh, facing the challenge of health issues connected to cooking uh, purposes in the area. And uh, what is coming up as one of the highest valued uh, outcomes of biogas process is the application um, 
of the digestate as fertilizer for the crops, uh, which is often has higher value than the biogas itself in the area. Um, also, a lot of positive outcomes has recorded in the last year's programs. Um, uh, we found out that high abandonment failure rates from 30 up to 80% for the in already installed digesters um, occurring uh, with size up to in digesters with size up to 10 cubic meters. Average size in the area is about 8 cubic meters. And so we have to uh, review how, why those abandonment failure rates are for in some area or districts at the time. And we found out that uh, a major problem is also higher national costs of the system at first, but also that they are got subsidized by several projects. Um, it's led to a not well-defined ownership and a lack of motivation for the users to operate the system. Uh, another point is also that the uh, reg regional markets for biogas systems is disordered through the subsidizing uh, parts. Um, in effect, with the lack of motivation for the operation, um, is that a biogas system in a small scale have the fact that they are really, really labor intensive uh, technology in comparison to other uh, renewable energy technologies. And we can see that uh, in two facts I would like to highlight. The first one is that for when we install the system, we have an increase in water requirement from up to 88% which is coming uh, um, on top to other water requirements for the household as livestock um, or cooking purpose. Another fact is also that often the collection of water is not like uh, the next door. It could be up in central places that are uh, away from 80, uh, 33 kilometers away from the installed system. So also the time which is need to collect the water often exceeds the time which is saved through not longer collecting uh, firewoods in the forests. Another purpose or point is also the increase in time needed for the pretreatment of substrate, uh, which is, could be up to 75% of the additional to the activities, uh, which are mostly subsidential agriculture. And so the pretreatment um, is also a labor intensive work. And it's necessary that the system works in the optimal space and to get a substantial amount of biogas out of it. Also connected to the op optimal um, work of the system is also a sustained supply of raw materials and resources for the biogas plant to operate it. And in connection to the target fruit of jackfruit, we found out that uh, jackfruit is in Uganda mostly not cultivated in large areas, uh, only in the backyard, like two or three trees, which would, would could not supply enough um, amount of substrate to uh, uh, to operate a biogas system. Other points are the seasonality of wet and dry season, grazing system, also uh, as many a supply for the system, often a free range and not uh, a stable grazing system, and of course the health of livestock. And yeah, uh, from these obstacles, we also um, see or uh, reviewed some problem solving approaches. One is uh, um, that we have the digestate, we separate the digestate in a solid and liquid part. The liquid part is brought back into the process, uh, which reduces the amount of water ne necessary for the um, operation significantly. Another approach, which is uh, technology more sophisticated, uh, was uh, that we have organic waste. So we pressed the waste before, also made a, a liquid and solid separation. The liquid part gets vaccinated by bioactive uh, substances, gets back into a biogas plant. And we had also the positive outcomes I uh, talked about before, as well as additional, also the solid part, which could be used as burning materials or feedstock for life, uh, feedstock for livestock. Here, the advantage is that we have uh, variability in the feedstocks um, as possible because we pre-process the feedstock and generate like a uh, liquid that is um, it could be bought in the process um, in, in equal compositions. 
Um, from these uh, outcomes, uh, we get general results, like uh, the first one that is a general outcome, I think, is that always when we have to implement the systems, we have to consider the water availability, the constant of feedstock supply, and the labor input for biogas has to be communicated to the user. In the biogas process itself, I would say, or we would say that the minimized input of water, we have to focusing on water recycling and collection systems as, um, and in the prepara preparation system, we have to look up uh, that we have, can apply varying feedstocks um, through several methods like liquid solid separation, standardization of mixing ratios, improvement of mixing pits, improvement of method preparation uh, as focus. For the Fluwasser project, um, the first outcome is that we not recommend uh, introduction of biogas on single household level in the project. A more central institutional commercial approach promises a higher success rate uh, where we have a community biogas plant or um, where we have clear re um, resp responsibilities for the systems. The second is for the target fruit biomass here, uh, jackfruit here. Uh, the chemical composition in terms of suitability has to be assessed. Also the amount of waste and co-digestion opportunities with cow dung in the area. And the third point, which is really important also, is that business training has to be focused within the project. Not only the technical parts have to be trained, also when the system is running or when maybe people want to um, generate or build up our own company out of uh, the training, uh, we have to also train them in the institutional requirements for businesses in the area. And with that, with three, three points, I would like to say thank you for your attention and looking forward to questions and discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much for presenting. Very nice topic and slides. And we even have a bit time for questions and I will make a, a start. As I wrote already uh, in the section here, uh, I wondered a bit why you focus so, so much on jackfruit. I think that was due to the project you are working on. But then in your presentation, you also have shown household systems yeah, with animal dung, even human uh, feces. So maybe you can explain why you focus so much on jackfruit and uh, also give an outlook to available feedstock in Uganda. Okay, um, so as you said, uh, it was uh, from the um, from the project focus, uh, the jackfruit target. And uh, already we focused also on three different feedstocks or target fruits. Uh, the other two, feedstocks which would be reviewed was uh, cassava leaves Ooh. and cowpea leaves and uh, during the research uh, it was uh, quite far or really in the first place we saw that uh, cowpea and cassava leaves are actual have a, um, a utilizing options as feedstock for the livestock uh, and is also uh, a meal for people in some areas of Uganda. Right. And so the focus gets to the jackfruit because of the high amounts of waste uh, we considered about it. And um, during the research, uh, we found out that yeah, it's not cultivated in large areas at the moment. And because of the focus of the whole project is on fruit processing processes and jackfruit has a lot of uh, good ingredients uh, for nutrition purposes also. Mm. Uh, as outlook for other feedstock for biogas system, I think the um, standard process at the moment for small scale is also uh, the animal uh, manure. And um, I think that would be also a good option for uh, other systems, but maybe, uh, but in combination with market wasted. Mm -hmm. uh, and market wastes are really often available in the areas from small scale markets also. And I think in combination with cow dung, we, the, the potential of biogas uh, yield uh, could be increased a lot. And I think that will be also for the future a really good opportunity for the biogas systems to implement in the area. Okay, thank you. Maybe we can continue later. Uh, I'll now look for guide is if he could settle his problems. 
You see him at least. Hello. You are good to see, but not so good to hear. <laughs> the microphone has a problem. Try again, speak a bit. Uh, just talk a bit. We cannot hear you. We just hear some noises in the background. Um, it is due to the existing generator now, so the problems regarding electricity that you can. No, we, we hear you, but we have to guess what you are talking. So the quality is really, really terrible. <laughs> Could you try to use a other microphone? Can you see the screen, sir? Just continue talking. Continue talking. No, we don't hear much from you. Uh, Maybe at least you can try to show your slides. Maybe you can try to share the screen and we look on your slides. If you share your screen, or did you send an upload? Uh, I am asking now our admin, uh, is there an upload from Guide? Okay. I think now Guide is sharing his screen. Yeah. Can you hear what I'm talking about? Can you so, hear? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Uh, <clears throat> now we see that you are trying to start your to share your screen, but the screen yeah, is yet appearing. I'm, it's not yet appearing. Yeah. Can you see my screen right now? No, not yet. We don't see it. Let me check. Uh, Guy, you could uh, you could continue to dry in the background. I just would like to ask you now to mute your microphone and you can experiment. You can try. <laughs> to bring uh, your slides on the screen. And during that time, we will continue to discuss with the other participants. Okay, so please mute your microphone and try to bring your slides on the screen. And I will come back to Ricardo. Uh, you might now switch on your microphone. Uh, Ricardo, you presented uh, biogas review for Indonesia. And also my question to you, I asked for three main constraints. Maybe you focus on one main constraint and give us some idea how this constraint could be resolved. Yeah, um, thank you for the questions. I, I guess uh, in in uh, Uganda and South Saharan Africa have the same uh, top issues. Uh, one is will be the economic because uh, the price for one installation of the small scale biogas still considered very expensive is around 400 to seven, uh, 700 uh, US dollar. Um, for uh, small scale farmers still considered this is uh, not affordable because uh, right now, Indonesian government still subsidy the LPG, uh, the 12 kilograms, uh, three kilograms of the LPG, and uh, with a uh, high subsidy. So, and then the second is about the the maintenance. Um, the skill uh, is not well uh, spread and educated for the farmers to to know. Uh, what to avoid instead of in 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 case of the uh, leakage, um, uh, something like the more technical things. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I'm 
also uh, previously said before that the the problem of the the policy frameworks is still uh, uh, from the study that I did. It's mostly because of the um, the the reliance on the external uh, funding, like uh, nonprofit organizations, in 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 starting this uh, uh, business, uh, while the government in itself still uh, have a very low uh, concern uh, towards the the implementation the implementation of this biogas. So uh, I think that's three reasons that why uh, the adoption is still very low in Indonesia. Okay, yeah, but you have shown us this 40,000 installations. I would say that's yeah, not so low. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, a potential, yeah it's, it's, it's in the middle, as I can say, in comparing to African and yes. the other like Vietnam, Bangladesh, and Nepal is one of the highest adopters of yeah. the gas. Yeah. And during your presentation, I have seen that the government, I think, also focused on those back digesters. I think that have been those plastic bags, yeah, using as a fermenter. Am I yeah, right? Yeah, the, the dome uh, type of the biogas, as uh, that's what you are trying to say. The, the I just read it. I just read it. Uh, you show you have shown the development of biogas systems during the last decades. Uh -huh. In one of these green boxes, I have red bag digester, a bag, yeah, like, like yeah. a plastic bag. Yeah, yes, yes. Because this reminds me to a development in, in our group. There is Katrin Pitts working in Ethiopia and she uh, is constructing, she has a small company now there. She is uh, manufacturing those plastic bags, large ones, yeah, as a digester. And they are also filling the biogas in backpacks so that you can put such a big bag, one cubic yeah. meter on your bag <laughs> and then transport the biogas to your home. To make it much more uh, mainstream to the business, to be more attractive, I think uh, that's uh, that will help a lot of the adoption. Otherwise, uh, it it still feels that it's very strange. Technology is not, uh, you know, it's not familiar for the farmers on even for the middle income uh, 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 household to adopt that. Yeah, because everyone have the ways. Everyone uh, like industry or uh, household also they they can uh, generate from their own waste the organic waste the manure the the slurry um, some of the farmers have their own uh, uh, pigs and cows um, that can utilize for uh, the the methan for the uh, okay but this is a good question yeah. where I will also come to Søren and to to Chama. <laughs> For example, Søren mentioned also in his lecture that human excreta might be used. And later on, you use this gas for cooking. Also question to Chama, how people are thinking about that, yeah, using excreta, even human excreta, and then using mm -hmm. this gas directly from the pit, guiding it through pipes to the kitchen, and then cooking on this gas. What do you think? Question to Søren and to Chama. Uh, and to, to you, Ricardo, you all can unmute your microphone, I think, now. Did I move? Okay. Okay. Uh, should I start? Or yeah, sure, and start. Okay. Um, so, um, what uh, the expert said that that's not the problem that the gas is coming from the human excreta. They already installed uh, um, such system in the schools and use the gas for uh, the cooking purpose in the school kitchen. But the problem with human excreta is that we have uh, pathogens uh, within the digestate. Mm. And this one could not be directly applied uh, to fields or for, uh, for crop, crop purposes. And this is also a big issue um, if you connect, uh, um, like if you only need, uh, use human excreta, for the um, for the biogas purpose, I think um, what what I heard in Uganda, it's not a problem that uh, the biogas is coming from the human excreta, but the yeah. pathogen problem maybe. What was for the effluent? Then later on, bring it to the home garden, yeah. For example, uh, the opinion of Shama to this 
problem of human excreta using in biogas systems in sub-Saharan Africa? Uh, yes, uh, I, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, it, is, it is not an issue. Okay. Yeah. So I think you think people don't don't mind about so they they have no constraints no taboos uh, to use human excreta in biogas plants and then using the gas for cooking and the effluent maybe in the home gardens. Uh, uh, like in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, many uh, uh, people uh, are promoting the use of. Uh, uh, of uh, human waste in small scale biogas plants. Uh, but the problem is the acceptance. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's our, our point of discussion. Yeah, the acceptance, if people mm -hmm. are accepting this. Yes, so the major problem is that uh, people are not uh, uh, directly accepting because uh, I mean, manipulating the waste is not, uh, very good. So, I mean, uh, people are not really giving into manipulating the way. So, uh, it would be ideal, uh, say, to have systems where people are not able to have access to the excreta, which means that uh, we have closed systems where uh, from the toilet, uh, it goes straight to the digester, and then from the digester, it is taken to the farms. But while they're in the farms, uh, it is not, uh, uh, say, uh, allowed say to use it on vegetables because uh, it will actually pollute the crop. So uh, in some, I mean, it is most uh, uh, say uh, important to apply it on say uh, tree crops uh, uh, because they are yeah. really far, far far from the from the fruits. Uh, uh, and also, um, it is uh, yeah because they are far from the fruits and. Uh, one of the points uh, will be, uh, say, to, in fact, the, it is actually having it uh, only on, 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 on fruit trees, yeah, so that the excreta does not get to the, uh, I mean, to, uh, so that the, 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 the food is not contaminated. And one of the things is actually to get governments to provide uh, say environmental standards for the use of those uh, weights, weights uh, say like excreta uh, in farms because uh, uh, the digestibility is not something that is already uh, fully uh, uh, say fully uh, mastered in sub-Saharan Africa. There are still issues with uh, having uh, uh, I mean highly high or efficient. Uh, digestion of the waste. So uh, the governments uh, in their environmental policies also still have a lot to do in, in, that, in, in that sense. But uh, to push people to uh, use it, uh, we, we, they need closed systems because from the various reviews that I've read, people are interested in using uh, excreta for, for, uh, for biogas production, but the system has to be closed and also only uh, the digested uh, waste can be applied only to fruit trees. Okay, thank you. I see some movements on the screen. <laughs> Our friends are still struggling here. Sometimes I have seen the slides. <laughs> okay, now we see you again, guide. But we do not yet see your slides. Uh, so I take. In a while, minute. Yeah. I will. I will look for other questions. I will just go in my background system and look if some other questions arrive from the audience. No, I don't see. I have a question for Soren, if I may. Okay. Yes, please. I'm interested to. Uh, uh, it was answered that you use the jackfruits, but um, what about the? Uh, I don't uh, still uh, 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 clear about the the sustainability. You know, like um, if it is overused and then the, there's a lot of demand in the market, and then how you are going to be sustainable to make make sure it's sustainable um, uh, or this is uh, one part of uh, 
uh, manure that you are using in, in the other it are like uh, waste as well, because we're talking about biogas, you need a uh, constant uh, input to the, to the, uh, to the digesters. Yep. Uh, that was also the problem uh, we saw with jackfruit. And uh, because of that, we said, um, because the focus of the project was on single household digesters. And uh, that was also the connection to the jackfruit that we said that it's not recommended in combination with jackfruit um, because we could not uh, have enough sustainable um, waste only from the jackfruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, because of that, uh, I think the focus should be more on market wastes to get in combination with markets, okay. with re regional. And uh, I think that would be a more sustainable um, possibility to, uh, as you say, yeah. And, um, but- do you, have, uh, do you have the numbers of like the production of the jackfruits compared to the others? Like how, how large is this? Because uh, is it why it become, uh, uh, become one of the uh, consideration, yeah? Um, because jackfruit is uh, grown also uh, in the backyards, uh, like trees, one or two trees are grown in the backyards of the households. And so uh, within a village, you have a lot of, you maybe have a lot of uh, jackfruit trees, but on a single household, you only have one or two or three. And it's like for the nutrition, for the uh, people living in the households, it's really good because they have a uh, summer seasonal, uh, um, yeah, in, summer, in seasonal distance or like one or two, three months away, some fruits available to, um, yeah, mm -hmm. to increase the fruit nutrition for the whole household. But um, because of that, I also talked about maybe a cooperation or community biogas plant where maybe the trees out of one village uh, or from several households of scattered villages uh, could be combined within a biogas process. And as Joachim mentioned, um, combined with the biogas backpacks uh, could be delivered in an exchange system. Maybe you bring the waste of the fruit and get there for this biogas and can cook two or three meals from one package, I think. And yeah, uh, at the final um, approaches that should be research or my recommendation for the future uh, project step was also like that check fruit is not enough to start and we have to consider other sources too. Yeah, I agree with you because um, combining it with the existing, um, you know, the, the financial systems uh, in Indonesia as well, um, it, it can be uh, important. Uh, I think Hyde, I can listen to the Hyde. Hyde, you can come, <laughs> but I will continue. Uh, the cooperatives, uh, the problem is the first installment, uh, the cost of installment in the beginning. Uh, actually, uh, it's, it, it, it comes the same because uh, they only need in the first, uh, the first time in the beginning. At, and, and the rest of the years, they they can just maintain to clean, to, to change the pipe and everything. Um, compared to the existing one right now, uh, in terms of like the cooking uh, 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 energy using the LPG, they have to pay it, uh, uh, per week, per, per, per month, you know? So that's the thing that uh, still uh, to change that uh, mindset from the farmers still uh, need a, uh, another approach for them to to try was, to adopt that yeah that was also mentioned uh, in uganda and um, also in uganda the thing is that as i said before often the digestate which is applied as fertilizer to the fields has a higher value than the biogas itself uh, because it increases the or it supports the structure much more than uh, reducing or the biogas itself and so Yep. Yeah, but Sören, as you mentioned, on a higher level, uh, you called it institutional yeah, or so. Uh, I would say for a food processing industry, it is a perfect solution yeah, to produce biogas, to get rid of the waste, which is disturbing a lot, producing biogas, and then uh, 
producing electricity, yeah? generating electricity, which you always need in those processing facilities. So in my eyes, that's matching very well if you have a year round feedstock. Yes, right. But if you have a strong season, <laughs> then you have too much waste in the season and no feedstock in the rest of the year. But maybe it could be preserved yeah, by silaging or so. And then you would have a new problem, technical problem <laughs> to solve. But the interesting one, yeah, how to store the feedstock for a year round uh, processing. On the other hand, if you have no season, you don't need the electricity. Yeah, that's the point. And uh, in the project, uh, next uh, research of the tech fruit in specific uh, is also uh, to apply it as biochar, as fertilizer, mm -hmm. and also to combine or press it to briquettes and to, um, because what is really the problem in Uganda is the, um, the case of deforestation and no longer available the wood fuels for the people. And the actual, uh, these, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, 30% of price increase was within one year. And so um, people are looking for alternatives at the moment and also the briquettes. Thank you, Sören. I just see the slides of guide. Oh, now they disappeared again. <laughs> so admin, please. <laughs> Dear admin and dear guide, try again to bring the slides on the screen. We have seen it for some seconds. Uh, it's not coming back. Just try again. So yeah, okay, we see. Now we see the slides. Okay, now we also should hear guide yeah i will start can you see slides right now yeah can you hear me uh, yeah but very very bad can you hear me sir uh hardly we ha i ha i hardly can hear you show just your slides and skip the long introductions yeah that show us the slides where we can read some information <laughs> Okay. It disappeared again. Yeah. Yeah, we have a bit time left. I could offer that you send me your presentation and I share the screen. I will type my email in the chat. <laughs> Yeah, just, just one time. Just one time. Can you hear me? We hear, but we cannot understand. The quality is too bad. So, just one question. Uh, uh, the video I sent to you, sir? Uh, you might look in the chat. You will find my email address, and you could write yes. and send me the presentation. Okay, I will see you. This is my I go to my mailbox again. It's nothing, nothing arrived so far. Yeah, just one second. Just give me one second. I'm saying it. It's a certain device. I go again to my mailbox. There is nothing there. Just, just a 
case of Guy performed a similar work in Syria, also making there a survey, uh, but he even visited farmers. Yeah, so you partly did a literature review. So Ricardo and Jama, and partly also Sören, but Guide visited uh, 255 farms and made interviews with the farmers. And also the question was, yeah, if biogas would be an option yeah, to introduce there in Syria, where are now uh, tremendous problems, of course, with the central energy supply. And uh, the outcome of the study, as I could read from the brief abstract was, yeah, that farmers are interested. I would say, of course, everybody <laughs> who has an option to get energy in the future has interest. And he also worked on constraints. So what the prerequisites, what is a framework that also bio in this farm? Syria. And uh, most of these farms have been livestock farms, as I have seen. And so I would say, yes, there is manure for fermentation. But all of you, well, we all know that just manure is not so much energy dense. Yeah, So you cannot produce so much biogas if you only use uh, manure from dairy cattle, yeah, which maybe are not well fed, yeah. So it always would be good to have some co-fermentation with other substrates which have a higher energy content. And this would be questions to guide, yeah, how he sees uh, the potential of biogas use in those farms. He has but uh, I think it's really a problem of internet connection. I will go into my notes. Yeah, but I didn't get a mail. Meanwhile, right? So I cannot share. There is nothing to share at the moment. Ah. Now a new a new presentation is popping up about huh, about straw fermentation. Where is a presenter? Jans is Jans here? I cannot see him in the list of participants, but we see here his presentation at least. <laughs> uh, we have fifteen minutes of time. And I could ask our admin maybe to click through the presentation of Jans, if possible. Would this work? Hello to everyone. Registro is one of the most abundant renewable linocelluloids crop residue with the most availability in the world. Registro is commonly used for animal feed and as a fuel for cooking and heating homes. However, the largest amount of registro remain in use in the field and burning in the open fields, fields causing serious environmental problems. Anaerobic digestion to produce biogas can offer promising benefits for use using registro and mitigating air pollution. It has been confirmed that anaerobic digestion is an attractive technology for simultaneous clean bioenergy production and waste treatment. Biogas and digeste are the two beneficial products of the anaerobic digestion. However, the inherent characteristics of the registro may be resistant to enzymatic biodegradation by anaerobic microorganisms. For that reason, the treatment of registro prior to anaerobic digestion process have been proven to be necessary to improve biodegradability and biogas production. Chemical treatment have been defined as the most promising method to improve the bioconversation of celluloids in order to improve the enzymatic accessibility and thus facilitate the subsequent anaerobic treatment. 
Several pertinent protocols have been used for the biomethanation of registrar that involve heating and the use of various amount of chemical. However, alkali treatment has been commonly investigated at high temperature with the drawbacks of special equipment requirement, high treatment costs and high energy consumption. The major objective of the present investigation was to minima minimize the alkali requirement at low temperature during pertinent to en enhance the hydrolysis of registro. In the present history, the effects of registro pertinent were investigated in a multifactor approach. For this purpose, purpose calcium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide were applied at different concentrations. Registro was air dried and milled using hammer mill grinder and sieved to select a straw of the cell particle size. The cellulose, hemi cellulose, and acid insoluble lignin contained in the registro sample was determined by the Van Soster method. The detection of total solids and volatile solids was carried out according with the standard method. Is lure obtaining for a countdown biomethanation industrial plant operated at 37 Celsius degree was used as an inoculum for hydrolysis from registro. To study the best condition of hydrolysis of registro residue, a factor experimental design was used. Four experimental factors were considered type of alkali compound, time of reaction, concentration of alkali compound, and inoculum to sustain ratio. The test design uh, in the test design, four grams of registro was added to 100 ml of each alkali solution during the corresponding treatment time at a 35 Celsius degree with circulating water. Then the alkali solution was drained and the corresponding inoculum to sustain ratio was added to each bottle and subsequently made, made up to volume with water to a volume of 100 milliliters. All tests were performed at 35 Celsius degree. An untreated sample of registro was simultaneously tested as the control. Each experiment was performed for 10 days. Volatile fatty acid samples were prepared by centrifugation before filtering through a nylon membrane. Volatile fatty acid concentration were measured using a gas chromatograph. Registro, like many linocellular biomass, possess several properties and that makes their suitable as a feedstock for biochemical conversion. Tablet 1 shows the chemical characteristics of the registro used in this study. The results show that the registro was composed of 48% uh, of cellulose. 22% of hemicellulose and 3% uh, of lining. Thus, the registro was considered as a promising carbon source for microbial fermentation. Alkali treatment is capable of improving registro biodurability by releasing organic soluble fraction. A fixed quantity of registro was exposed to various concentrations of calcium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide for various duration to optimize the petriment at low temperature. The efficacy of the petriment on the hydrolysis stage, stage was monitored in terms of volatile fatty acid production. 
the volatile concentration of the petrite of the petrite rice straw is shown in figure one. Volatile fatty acids in the anaerobic reactor mainly comp comprise acetic and propionic acids. Total volatile fatty acid production increasing from uh, 89 mg per liter for untreated rice in, in, of, of untreated rice straw to 187 when rice straw was, pretre was pretreated for 4 hours with 10 grams per, per gram rice, rice dry matter of calcium and uh, hydroxide and use it an inoculum to substrate ratio of 50%. Compared to potassium hydroxide, the calcium hydroxide has more significant influence on the volatile fatty acid production. Analysis of variance confirmed that the boost concentration of alkali compound significantly influence the production of volatile fatty acid. Economically, the optimal, the optimal amount of calcium hydroxide for the petrite registro was considered 4 grams uh, per gram rice dry matter due to no significant difference were observed at a dose of 10, of 10 grams per per grams right dry matter. For further investigation, registro will be pretreated pre with 5% of calcium hydroxide for 5 hours at 35 Celsius degree temperature and evaluated for biomethanation. The preliminary results just suggested that from the same amount of rye material added, the protected rice straw with calcium hydroxide, the hydrolysis gel is high, highest compared with untreated rice straw. The result of this study showed that calcium hydroxide treatment could significantly enhance the hydrolysis of miller rice straw. Maximum production of volatile fatty acid was achieved with rice straw treated with 10% of calcium hydroxide for 5 hours. Alkali patrimi increased the, the production of volatile fatty acid by 47% over that obtaining with miller rice straw without alkali uh, treatment. Calcium hydroxide patrimi is a provision uh, process that can be carried out at low temperature. Thank you for attention. Sorry, now my microphone is on. So, Presenda was not here, but his video. So, very interesting presentation about fermentation of rice straw which is of course very difficult because we have a very low energy content. And again, it's quite dry. So uh, we have heard today that also the addition of water might be a tremendous problem. Yeah, if you have uh, to carry so much water for the fermentation process. Uh, but beside of this, uh, he found a method, a pretreatment for the rice straw so that it could be fermented by adding this lime uh, beside of potassium uh, oxide. So my question to him would be, okay, he wrote that he is adding four gram of lime to one gram of straw. And I thought, oh, what are they doing? <laughs> adding more lime than they have straw. But it seems that he means four gram of this solution. Yeah? They diluted the lime in water and added this dilution to the process. This is what I assume what, what, what they did. And I would say, yes, lime is available yeah, from uh, construction industry, building industry, it's low cost. Uh, I would say interesting, yes, to try to apply it in practice. What's your opinion about rice straw? I think Indonesia has rice straw 
and some parts of sub-Saharan Africa also have rice. What about using rice straw in anaerobic digestion? Uh, can I say something? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. So uh, he's also using lime, and I also uh, is I'm worried about uh, the rate of uh, sedimentation also uh, in the digester because we have the the, the I mean quite large volumes, um, quite quite large amounts of straw, uh, like the rice straw, and it's usually not used for anything except for. For, for 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 heat stoves like the uh, stoves made for the use of uh, dry rice uh, straws. So maybe there will be too much uh, energy use in the pre-treatment, yeah. and also uh, maybe uh, the effect of the treatment can also affect uh, sedimentation. So it's uh, a process uh, to really uh, look at it deeply uh, before going say to market scale because it's still prob problematic and we need more results to see how feasible it can be because in sub-Saharan Africa it has been used uh, 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 dry and mainly in uh, rice uh, straw stoves. Very good comment yeah I think they did it in lab and it worked in lab but there might be some uh, practical problems as you told us sedimentation yeah in the fermenter and then it will be clogged Yes, in some time. And also that the rice straw is very dry. So I would say if I have a very dry feedstock, maybe even combustion would be a better option than fermentation. On the other hand, we have Sören with his Czech fruit, which has a very high water content, maybe too high. <laughs> and in that case, fermentation is the best way yeah, to, to use it. We also, mm -hmm. we always should adapt the method of energy conversion to the physical properties of our feedstock. Yes. Yeah, and that you also have noticed, okay, there is first a milling operation. Yeah, first milling the rice straw, and the rice straw is very ab abrasive, yeah, very, very aggressive, yeah, by the silica, which is a component of the rice straw. And you have a lot of bear in those hammer mills, yeah, beside the energy input you need for, for milling. But nevertheless, the lab experiments and the lab, lab uh, results um, are interesting, anyhow. Mm -hmm. So any more questions from your side? We have one minute left <laughs> from our time, but maybe I will use this uh, to thank you again for being here, for staying here, even on the background of those technical problems which we have facing. Sorry to guide that we cannot hear and see him very properly, but his work in Syria is very important and we also wish him all the best for the future and all of you. And if you once come to Hohenheim live, I would be happy to show you our facilities in Hohenheim. Okay. So try to come in 3D and then we will have a tour through our facilities. So enjoy the open tag and all the best for the future. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presenters. It was great. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.